Good morning and welcome to Get Your Jam On with Jamboard. Um, we're glad to have you today. We're going to do a, an overview today on getting started with Jamboard, which is kind of like an interactive whiteboard. Uh, joining me today is my colleague from the EdTech training team, uh, which is um, Dominique Wicker. Dominique, you want to introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, I'm Dominique Wicker. Like John said, I'm on the EdTech training team, and I'm so excited to be showing you some awesome ways to use Jamboard with your students digitally this morning. Thank you for joining. Just a quick reminder that we are recording this session, and it will be posted on our website, which is edtechtraining.pombyschools.org. And later, we will also make sure that we post um, some handouts and other support materials on our website, as well as see the embedded video and our slides. And we're going to go ahead and just get started so you can actually start learning. So we're going to go live and go into Jamboard. So uh, the first thing to do is that in your email or drive or whatever, you're going to go to your application switcher. That's this little uh, doodaddy over here. Let me just turn on my uh, cursor mouse. There we go. Uh, and I'm just going to click on this. And then uh, mine is down here still. It's Jamboard, but you can drag these around and rearrange them. And I'm just going to click on Jamboard. And these are all my jams that I've been practicing with and playing with and stuff like that. If you're ready to start a brand new Jamboard, you're just going to go down here to the bottom. And you're going to click this little plus that says New Jam. And up comes the new jam board. And basically this is just a white board kind of frame. You can present it uh, to your students just to share it with them, or you can actually uh, share. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. There are different types of backgrounds, like you can do lined paper, uh, you can do grid paper for math, uh, but we'll just start with a basic white board here. Over on the left-hand side are your pens and your pen colors. So you have different types of pens. There's a brush, there's a highlighter, there's a marker, there's a pen, and there's our different ink colors. I'm just gonna start with the green and so you can actually see, um, we'll say hello this morning. And that was pretty impressive of me to write in with my cursor there. Uh, you can also erase. So you can erase like this, or you can clear the whole frame like that. Uh, this is your pointer tool for pointing. Um, I love the sticky notes because you can do all kinds of things with sticky notes like reading and then you can do another one and change the color and do math. So it's almost like a project board or something like that. There we go like this. And so there's all kinds of different things that you can do and you can drag these around. You can angle them like this, you can resize them, you can duplicate them, edit them, or delete them just by clicking on that tool. That's the sticky notes. You can add images, you can upload an image. It only is images, you can't pull a PDF. So if you have a PDF, you may want to do a screenshot of it. You can also do Google image searches like you've seen in some of the other apps, like, like if I was doing parts of a butterfly, I could pull up, I could spell butterfly, and then just pull that butterfly and say select, and you can import that image, you can resize it, you can move it around. And then the last tool over here is a laser pointer, which is kind of cool. You can actually highlight and it goes away. So it's like a little laser pointer and stuff like that. To name the jam, you would come over here and click name jam and just call it test jam. Click OK. You also have the ability to do multiple pages. So you don't have to be on one page. You can actually expand that and create more than one image. So you can actually just click that and share that. And uh, you can have each kid or each group going on a different page and put a little sticky note over here with their title. You can do all those different things. Um, and the last thing I'm going to share with you is just you can share this. You can share that with anybody that has a link. You can change the access. So if I want to share anybody that has a link 
more with just people in the school district of Palm Beach County or with a link and I can click save to do that and I can click done and I can just share out that link. And so that's a real quick overview. There is so much more that you can do with it, but I'm gonna turn it over to Dominique and she's gonna go through some more specific examples of how to use Jamboard. So Dominique, you wanna take it over? All right, everyone, let's get started. Um, I love Jamboard. I use Jamboard in my classroom when I was a, a high school teacher. So I'm gonna show you some of the strategies that I use with my students. They are super easy to implement um, and you could leave here today and, and use them with your students tomorrow. So the first activity that I often did in Jamboard was brainstorming or e exit and entry tickets. And you do this by using the sticky note feature that John just showed you. Also, this resource, this Adobe Spark page, will be available to you after this webinar is over. And it has um, screenshots of what the final outcome should look like for each activity and also step-by-step -step directions that I'm going to be going over right now. So let's get started. So if we wanted to create something like this in Jamboard, you would need to have a blank jam. And you're going to use a sticky note. So you have different options for colors, for brainstorming activities or entry and exit tickets. I would suggest that you change your sticky note to a different color. Most of your students, once they start to upload their responses are going to be yellow and you want your question or your discussion piece to be a different color. So let's say that we were talking about nocturnal animals and this was a new unit and I wanted to see what my students already know about nocturnal animals. And then you would put that right in the middle of your board. I would make it bigger again so it stands out. And that is the only setup that you need for this particular activity. The magic comes in when you can go ahead and assign this within Google Classroom. So the nice thing about Jamboard is that it is a Google application, so it integrates very nicely with things like Google Classroom. So you would go to your classroom, click on classwork, click create, and then click assignment. As always, give it a name. You will put your directions here. And then you will go ahead and attach your Jamboard. So you're going to click Add and then go to Google Drive. And the Jam should show up right here because it's a recent document. And now it's attached. Because I want my students to all kind of collaborate on this one Jamboard and I want to see all their responses in one spot, I need to change the edit access here. So if you keep it at view, no one can do anything. They're only going to be able to look at the Jam. If you change it to students can edit the file, then all the students have edit access to one document, in this case, one Jamboard, which is what I want for this activity. So go ahead and do that. Again, always change your topic if you have them and then you will click Assign. Once your students are assigned this Jamboard, their experience is going to look exactly like this. They're going to have edit access. You'll see um, their little um, Google um, icon show up here. Um, but for the most part, what they're going to add to the board are just sticky notes. And you would just instruct them to go here and add a sticky note that has their response to what is a nocturnal animal. They can also add images. So some students may say, hey, I know what a nocturnal animal is, things like bats. And they could go ahead and do a Google search for bats. and they will just resize it, they can move it, they can also add a sticky note and they can write a text response. Um, it's an animal. Something like that. And once they start popping up, they will pop up all around the board. You do have the control to move these around. Depending on the age of your students, you can also instruct them to move them around so that they're easy to, easier to read. Um, but what happens is you have this nice, nice um, overview of what your students already know about a particular topic. It also becomes a great discussion piece. Um, it's anonymous for the most part, so you have those students who are shy. They don't have to worry about being called out um, if they don't think their response was correct or if they're a little bit um, you know, embarrassed about it. 
Um, so this is just a great easy way to see what your students know about a new topic or see what they know about a topic that you've been discussing. Okay, and again, all those steps are right here. The next activity that I often use is sorting. In this particular um, example, I was teaching about the different protocols for the internet. We had been learning about it for a couple of days, and I wanted to see what my students actually retained about each protocol. So I'm going to show you how to set this particular jam up. So for this, you're going to use the pen feature. If you are on a touchscreen device like a Chromebook, you can use your finger to navigate. Um, I can't do that right now, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna just use my mouse. I would say don't worry about being <laughs> um, perfect with your lines, as long as it's readable and your students can understand it, I'm not too worried about it being cricket like that. So you would set up your category, so if you have three categories, you can go ahead and do that. And then you would use sticky notes to give them a title. So let's say we were learning about different types of animals. So mammals. Amphibians and reptiles. And just go ahead and move them to their categories. You can make them bigger. You can also change the color if you want, if you wanted them to stand out. Then once you have your categories, you're going to add your sorting content. And I would do that by using, again, some sticky notes. So you can give examples of different types of animals. You can also, again, add pictures to make this more visual. I'll go ahead and reuse bats. And once you have all your sorting content, you're just gonna kind of move them into the middle of the board. You can plop them right on top of each other in random order. And that's all you have to do to set it up. Again, the magic comes in when you actually assign this as an assignment. So we go back to Google Classroom, click Create, click Assignment. Always give it instructions and go ahead and add your jam. For this particular activity, this is more of an individual independent assignment. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you are going to change the edit access not to edit or view, but to make a copy for each student. So this essentially just gives a photocopy of the jam that you just created to each student. So they only have edit access to their own particular um, copy of this. Again, always give it a topic and then click assign. Once your students have the assignment, again, they will have edit access, but it will only be to a copy of this document. So they will not have edit access to the main document where everyone can kind of you know, collaborate together because this is an independent activity. Once they are in the assignment, all you have to do is instruct them to sort the content in the middle into the appropriate categories. Again, if they're on a Chromebook or a touch device, they can slide it with their hands. If they just have a mouse, they can just drag it over. And I'm just putting them into their categories. This may or may not be correct, but you get the idea. Okay, very easy to set that up. It took me about three minutes, um, and then it's ready for your students to use. All right, the next activity that we're gonna go over is another sorting activity. This is more rigorous. So if you want to add a little bit more rigor into your um, assignments, this is one way to do that. So it is a sorting activity. However, I will not create the sorting categories for my students. All I'm going to do is create the sorting content. So again, uh, bats. Some images in here. Okay. 
And you can also upload images that you already have. It's just easier for me right now because I don't have anything related to this topic already stored, but you could do that. And once you have all your sorting content, again, move them to the middle of the board right on top of each other. And that's all the setup that you need for this particular activity. You then go back, upload it to Google Classroom, click Add, and then again for this activity, this is an independent activity, so I want to make a copy for each student. And now once the students have the assignment, again, they're going to get access to one copy of a document that they own. And you're just going to instruct them, students, I have put content here for you to create the set sorting categories yourself. So now you're forcing them to think about, hmm, what do these animals have in common? You can provide a little bit more support and you can tell them how many categories or you can just leave it totally open. It depends on the level of rigor that you want. Once you give this to them, all you have to do is instruct them to use the pen. They can choose whatever color they want, and then they will create these sorting categories themselves, so like I did earlier. Again, don't worry about it being pretty as long as it's functional. And then they will create each, um, each type of animal in this case. That's that. So you essentially take in the same sorting activity, but flipped it around and increased rigor um, just a little bit. Okay. And then you would just have them, like always, just go back to Google Classroom and they would turn this in. All right. So the next activity is a labeling activity. So if you had an image or a file, a PDF file, for example, you could just take a screenshot of it and you can turn it into a labeling activity. This is super easy to set up because all you need is one or more images and a sticky note. So let's say I want to use the exact same picture of the brain because it looks nice. That one. If it's just one image, just go ahead and make it as big as you can so it's nice and nice and easy to see. This image has defined colors, so you can easily see the different parts of the brain. If you don't have an image that's defined like this, it's totally okay because the strategy I'm gonna show you now will allow you to clearly mark where you want your students to label. So after you have your image, you're gonna use a sticky note and you're just gonna put a number. So if there's five things to be labeled, you're gonna have three sticky notes. I'm sorry, five sticky notes. And then you can just plop them right on top of where the students need to label. And that's all the setup. Then you would just go to Google Classroom, again, create an assignment. And actually, I just made a boo-boo. I did not change the edit access. So let me go back. And that's totally okay. I do it all the time. Just go back and, and delete the particular assignment. But make sure that you change the edit access. What I just did is I, I left it on view, and that's not what we want because the students will not be able to interact with it or collaborate. So you have to make sure that you change this to make a copy for each student. If you give them edit access, they have all have ed access to the same document. So make a copy for each student, you give it a topic, and then click assign. Once they have the assignment, it's going to look exactly like this. And all you can instruct them to do is to double click on each sticky note, and it gives you immediate access to edit it, and just have them to change the number to the appropriate label. So if this was the hypothalamus, then it would go there. Um, if this was the frontal lobe, then they would put that. Okay. 
um, I don't know the areas of the brain, but whatever it may be, just have them double click and replace it with the actual label. And I think this is the hypothalamus. And that's it. And once they are done, then they're going to turn it in via Google Classroom. Um, you can set up multiple images on your Jamboard to have them label. It depends on the scope of the activity and what you guys are learning. But super simple. It took about two minutes to set up this activity. Just plop in a picture, put in some sticky notes with some placeholder numbers, and then assign it to your students. The next activity that I absolutely love is creating a Freer graphic for vocabulary. Um, this is very easy to set up, and I'm going to show you a trick for how to duplicate so you don't have to keep doing each one over again. Okay. So if you're not familiar with Freer graphics, they are essentially just a graphic organizer that makes vocabulary more interactive and helps students to retain the information. So for this, you're going to need a blank jam. And you're going to set it up into four quadrants. Again, don't worry about how pretty it is. If I was using my finger, it would be a lot straighter. Okay, so four quadrants. And in the first quadrant, you're going to put um, the word definition. You need another sticky note for illustration. Example and non example. The definition goes in this quadrant. Illustration can go here, example goes here, and non example goes here. In the middle, you're going to plop in one more sticky note with the actual vocabulary word. And that will go right in the middle. So you would have your students, either by using sticky notes, they can type the definition or the example or non-example. They can use images that they find online, images that they take, them, uh, pictures that they take themselves. They can use the pen tools to illustrate with the markers and the pens. Um, but this is just a really nice way to kind of make vocabulary a lot more interactive. What I usually did is I did an entire jam for one particular set of vocab. So let's say that um, I was working with the unit types of animals. And I wanted this gym board to have only vocabulary for types of animals. And I wanted a fair graphic for each vocabulary word. So I've already made one here. All I have to do is go up here to my frame bar and find the frame that I want to duplicate, click on the little snowman, and click duplicate. And now I have the exact same frame, but now I, all I have to do is change this one sticky note for the new vocabulary word. I didn't have to redo any of this. All I'm doing is changing the word. Go back to your frame bar and just keep repeating for as many vocabulary words that you have. So if you have 20 vocabulary words, you'd have 20 frames. But this is a nice way for your students to always go back to their vocab and see a visual representation of each vocabulary word. You can also have students um, add sticky notes with links to videos in here. Um, the only thing is with links, you have to actually copy and paste them out of Jamboard and put them into a new tab because it doesn't support direct links. But there's many different ways that they can go ahead and show mastery of the particular vocabulary words. And it's very easy to use because, again, you do not have to recreate each frame. You just duplicate it and then change the vocabulary word in the middle. And then the last couple of examples are one-pagers. This is an example of a one-pager that students can do by hand using you know regular pen and markers and things like that. You can achieve a similar product on Jamboard by having students use a combination of the pens and markers, especially if they have a stylus. It works really nicely. 
by using sticky notes, by finding images offline or images that they take themselves, and just kind of creating sort of a collage. And you can ach achieve a similar result, but in a digital way. And then lastly, um, if you're working with older students um, and it's more of a project-based um, assignment, something that's kind of ongoing over a couple weeks or a month, this is a great way to get students introduced to tracking their progress and, and kind of setting up. This is called a scrum board and it's kind of scrum light. Um, they're actually a lot more complex, but I actually use this in my own personal work because I love sticky notes, but they clutter my desk. Um, and so I transferred them to a Jamboard. So you can use something like this again with older students um, and it's a nice way for them to can start to understand what they have to do, what they're doing and what has been completed and to see it in a visual way. Depending on the level of support you want to provide, you can go ahead and create this board on your own and then assign it to your students. You can have your students create it by themselves. Um, you can create the board and have them to do the tasks on their own or you can create the task for them. It depends on the level of support that you want to provide. But essentially all you would do, and I'll do this very quickly. Again, is you need some pens and you just create three columns. Don't worry about it being straight. Use the sticky notes to make your labels. and just move them over. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit more rigorous, you could leave it like this and assign it to your students. And you can instruct them either independently or in small groups to go in and think about the projects that they're working on and the tasks that need to be done. And they would populate the to-do tasks themselves. If you want to provide support, you could go in and go ahead and provide them with the list of tasks that they need to complete. provide that extra support and then assign it to them. Move them all here and then assign it to Google Classroom and then have them as they complete them to just move them over. Okay, so if they're currently doing number one, have them put it here and then once they complete it, they can put it here. And this is just a nice way for them to keep track of what they need to do and what they, what they have already done and how far they've come on their project. The ultimate level of, of rigor is to have them, again, to create their own tasks with their group or independently and just kind of break down a big problem into smaller subtasks. And this is a great way to teach kids abstraction and making a big um, task into smaller manageable pieces. All right, so at the bottom of this resource, again, you'll have a link to this page um, once this webinar is over. This is a link to a Jamboard, a live Jamboard that has some examples of what I just went over and they're already kind of set up, the different types of strategies you can use here. So here's one with the brainstorming activity. If you go frame by frame, um, it's just different um, activities that you can use and it has very specific directions and how to set it up. And there's also a link to the Google Teacher Support site for Jamboard. There are some nice videos in here about how teachers around the world are using this. There is a real Jamboard device right here that looks like a smart board. We don't have those in our district. So if you get to a video and it's talking about the actual Jamboard, feel free to watch it, but just make sure that you're kind of blocking out all the information that they're referring to about the actual Jamboard because we do not have access to those. But there's also some ways that you can use this in math and a bunch of different um, different strategies that people are using around the world. Um, again, Jamboard is super intuitive, but it has a lot of potential and a lot of possibilities, and the possibilities are only as limitless as your imagination. All right, are there any questions? Awesome, Dominique. Um, John, did you wanna add anything else before we go to any sorts of questions, or do you wanna share anything? Sure, I'll just share a few more examples that I put together just to kind okay. of add to what Dominique's um, really good explanation of everything. I just wanted to show how you could import things like uh, maps and stuff like that from different historical perspectives so they can uh, students can actually retrace. 
um, the Lewis and Clark's um, uh, uh, journey from St. Louis all the way to over here to the uh, Pacific Coast at the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, they can also do like worksheets like this if you wanted to do this. Or just remember, you can only import um, images. You can't um, do PDFs. So you would have to do a screenshot of that to actually bring that over. And then uh, you can use the grid paper that we showed over in the background area. Um, what I liked about it was it was great for doing perimeter. So if you wanted to set up on a math activity that had the formula in here and then let them come up with different examples and do the math, it would be a great resource. One thing I didn't share with you earlier is that these three dots, you can actually download as a PDF or save it as an image. So if you wanted to use it as an example, you could create your own examples in uh, um, Jamboard as well. So those were just kind of some few things that I wanted to add on to those questions. So um, do we have any questions? Um, I think that there have been a lot of great discussion that I've seen in the chat so far. Um, <clears throat> there is one question that I'm not sure maybe you know, but there's a question is, what is it, where does it mean where it says open on a jam board? Have you guys ever seen that before? Yes, so that is if you actually have that physical Jamboard device that I was just talking about that we do not have in our district. So we will then have a Jamboard, mm -hmm. kind of like a smart board. And if you were actually um, using that, then you can open your Jam on that device. But that, mm -hmm. so that doesn't apply to our district because we don't have those devices. So that's the difference. And, and as Dominique shared, keep in mind, that website, all the support sites, there, there are some different ones. Some will talk specifically with the hardware side of things, um, and others will talk about the website sort, sort of thing. So keep that in mind as you're looking up resources. Um, as we're going along, if there are any other questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. I will say there have been some great ideas on how teachers can use this in the classroom. There's been an awesome discussion talking about um, uh, prefixes, suffixes, KWL charts. Um, using it for ELL vocabulary. Uh, they love the Freire model idea. Um, there, there's lots of great communication that was going on in the chat as well. So I thought that was awesome. Um, so as we're waiting for more questions in the chat, don't forget Dominique did have that document that she was working on. That's for, she built that in Adobe page. Um, so we will be sharing that on our website, edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. So that will be there hopefully later today, if not tomorrow. And so you would be able to then um, access that page and see all of those ideas uh, up close with all the directions. Um, one quick question here is when would you use the laser tool? Uh, so that's really good if you were um, recording yourself using the Jamboard and you just kind of wanted to use it as a, as a pointer um, just to kind of point something out or put something into focus. That's how I use it when I did use it. Very minimal though. Um, again, if you were recording your screen or doing like a live stream with your students, you can use this as a pointer. I was going to say exactly. I think it's perfect during a live stream. If you're doing a meet with your students, that's a great way to point things out on your screen. This is a great way you can organize your lesson as well for a live stream where you're sharing your screen and you can go through. Um, they can have a copy of this as well. So you're doing it. They can have your copy and then you're sharing that live one as well. So awesome. Um, uh, one so, thing I wanted to add about that is that sure. it would be great when you're modeling your lesson, if you were actually modeling this lesson for your students or recording your um, uh, your screen, you could use Screencastify or you can re uh, ca do capture the screen and actually use the laser pointer to mm -hmm. point out different parts of right. the screen. Like if you were doing the map exercise or some of the math so they could actually see what you're talking about instead of just l trying to look on the screen. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Using that pointer is important. Um, and Shannon shares that, that there are sample districts on the on the district's reading innovation, reading intervention office hours page has examples of, of Jamboard. And I do believe I, I believe that's elementary, if I'm not mistaken. I believe they've kind of jumped on Jamboard quite a bit uh, for the digital learning. So yeah, there's lots of great um, resources out there. Don't be scared to Google questions. Don't be scared to look up on YouTube. Um, there are literally thousands of ideas on how you can use Jamboard in your classroom 
just by going to YouTube. So don't be scared of YouTube. Go on there and learn for yourself. Um, so again, one other thing we want to share, we do have a form that is uh, being manned by a group of people. So if you do have any questions, um, we're asking that you would please um, go ahead and fill out this form. There are multiple people that are, that are monitoring this form. It is case sensitive, but just go ahead and fill that out and someone will get back to you either by video chat or by email. Um, but please feel free to ask any questions that you might have um, on any app that you can think of, and we'll find an answer for you. Um, with that, I will let John and Dominique uh, say thank you and take it out. Awesome. So I hope that you guys found some ways that you can easily use Jamboard in your classroom even today or tomorrow. Um, and thank you for attending this morning. I know it's early and it's the start of a new week. So definitely happy that you guys were able to attend. Again, please reach out if you have any questions or concerns with Jamboard or any other digital tools that you may need help with um, during our digital learning. And one more thing is like, we know it's hard out there and you're trying to do your best to learn new things. And this is something really easy to get started with. It doesn't have a lot of features, but it has pretty powerful what it can do. And just to try it with your students and make the best of it. And thank you and have a great day. Awesome. Bye guys. Have a great day.